We're here at the uh, Radisson Hotel outside of Gamescom where, uh, well, basically it's been run by Sony this week. I think they've uh, taken over all the, all the rooms and all the meeting rooms and everything. And we caught up with Yuan here who had a fresh announcement for us yesterday, Hell Divers. And it's kind of hard to sort of say top-down Starship Troopers when you think of it, right? Well. You could say that, but that would be a copyright infringement, wouldn't it? Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. No, neither do I. No, but it, we, 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 we're always inspired by a lot of great like books, style uh, games, uh, and well, even comic books when we make games. And of course, there are references to everything. I mean, Magica had a ton of Lord of the Rings and Star Wars references, and and uh, as does Helldivers, and we've just taking the chance to do space satire this time around in a true sense, not just uh, doing a, a medieval version of the space jokes. Yeah, and, and, but there are some sort of arrowhead uh, sort of DNA in there that, that, that's probably always going to be in your games. There's, there's the co-op thing, there's the uh, friendly fire, and it's also kind of unforgiving in a way. Yeah, and, and it is unforgiving, especially when you're not really thinking five seconds ahead. If you just do, do things on a, well, uh, short-term basis, then you will eventually screw things up for both yourself and your friends. And I mean, this happens even when you join into a game, say two people are playing and you grab a controller and press start, you drop in in one of these hell pods and you smash both of the guys. That's actually happened several times. So just adding that extra guy to the, to the mix isn't usually, I mean, it's just not, it's not a win-win situation. It could be a quite a devastating move. Hopefully he's got the, the spawn, uh, spawn ability. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And uh, th that's something that we really uh, actually emerged from a discussion with, uh, with Sony. We have a really good back and forth with uh, Foster City Studios, especially our uh, uh, producer over there. We got a real tight connection. And uh, we had this meeting about like, what could be really interesting about the game. And we had some uh, early adaptation of the stratagem system which we got in the game, where you input combinations to get certain abilities. And, uh, and it wasn't as elaborate as it is now. But what, what emerged out of that meeting was the, abil uh, the ability for the uh, gamers to uh, select a loadout, select a composition of the entire team, and then drop into battle and use these stratagems at any time during battle. So sort of it's, it could be, in a way, uh, you could do a reference to sort of like the uh, um, MOBA genre abilities of each hero, but you get to select all of these abilities for your own hero, and then you do co-op battle against uh, one of three alien species. I think the, the the choice of doing it sort of with a, a button combination or a direction arrow combination uh, is is kind of interesting because a lot of movement in gaming has been towards sort of making things easily available for the user, just button press or you know, context text sensitive things that you can do in certain areas. But this sort of more like speaks to a skilled player can use these much more efficiently and doesn't even have to look, it just, it's just in the fingers, right? Is that, is that the idea? Yeah, exactly. And we've had this happen several times. I mean, uh, when we, we did a play, when we played, uh, recorded the materials for, uh, for the, tra the trailer, we had to turn off the UI. And that provided quite a different sort of set of challenging aspects to the game. But one of our guys, uh, our animator, Nicholas, he was so proficient uh, at using the strategy, he just knew all the combinations. And we learned that when we started playing it, because nobody else knew how to use them. And we were like, Nicholas, how does that combination work? And he's like, yeah, it's up, down, left, right, or something like that. And, and it really goes to show that people that are really uh, creative and uh, hardcore, not hardcore in the sense that they play for a long time, but they want to learn the game and they want to be really good at it in a short uh, amount of time. They can be very proficient, and he is probably the best player on the uh, in the studio. And he, uh, compared to our lead programmer, which just kills everybody for some reason, he I, I've called him incompetent more than once uh, during uh, during playtesting of Helldivers. Get back to program. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what he does best. So, but but it's also an interesting thing because there's a, there's an element of panic there. 
when you're trying to spawn someone back or, or do something and you got, you know, the faster you can do it, the more immediate it is, otherwise you might be dead. So if you want to bring down a turret, it's, it's that waiting time that sort of for things to spawn that's like that's that's sort of key to the enjoyment of the game. Yeah, and yeah, it is. And uh, you could sort of liken this to to a die roll in a board game. Mm. Like you sort of have the suspense of uh, of inputting the combination that's sort of shaking the die, and then you use use the ability, and then you have like a duration of maybe five up to fifteen seconds before you actually get what you ordered because you need to prepare it in space. Also, no, it's it's just basically because we want that suspense. Uh, and that's sort of like when you throw the die and the die rolls and then you get the outcome. And that's when things happen. So we wanted to capture that sort of essence of suspense. And we've done this in, in many, many ways. Uh, and we're trying to further that even more because that's some, one of the things that we realized in the previous games that we did, that the suspense before something uh, hilarious happens is like boost the hilarious part by a million. And we want to sort of capture that. So uh, and and the way the, the map plays out is a bit interesting as well. There's objectives that you go and do, and then you finally get extracted, and that that sort of that extraction moment is like the highlight of the whole sort of whole session. It, w is that sort of significant, or like I, I've only played one level, obviously that's available here. But is that g how the game is going to play out, or will you have different so style of layouts for for maps? Uh, the uh, the entire. Uh sort of campaign that you're fighting is is a global meta game so everybody on uh, that's playing the game are trying to win this war against these three alien species and you push these borders together uh, and that will create sort of like a global effort to to win the war and each mission that you select uh, is or rather you select a planet that you that you are personally responsible for for handling and during this mission you have up to maybe seven, ten missions to do, or as low as maybe two. And uh, these missions are procedurally generated. So uh, the, it, every mission for, follows the same formula. You, su you select your drop zone, you drop in with your s uh, set loadout, or your, your, sh your loadout of your choice, and then you find the objectives that you got earlier. And this can vary from uh, like escort missions, destroy missions, and all the classical sort of archetypes that you would uh, see in any action movie or, uh, or or reading of in any book or military uh, guide or whatever you, your preferred poison is. And of course, in the end, you got to get to the shuttle, shuttle, chopper, shuttle sort of reference. Yeah, and and. That triggers, of course, a violent response. Yeah, it does, uh, and this sort of this is an emergent part of the game. Since we we've taken the the emergent uh, sort of mechanics even further, uh, since the uh, map com uh, comprises of uh, several objectives, of course, and uh, procedurally generated terrain, but you also got these patrols that are wandering around on the map, and as soon as you encounter them, they can set off an alarm, which will cause an encounter to happen. And in the end, when you're waiting for the shuttle, all of these patrols are sort of massing to your position. And of course, eventually one will call an encounter, and that will create this frenzy. And after the encounter is done, they will spawn another encounter, because you're basically staying in the same position while you're waiting for the shuttle. And that creates like the, a really climactic moment. I think like three of the four of us were crawling, bleeding up on the... <laughs> <laughs> on the right. shuttle, yeah. yeah, yeah, and and that's happened so many times. And we, I mean, the last minute friendly fire usually tends to be the most hilarious one as well. Like when three guys are running towards the shuttle and somebody just needs to help somebody with the shotgun, uh, and because there's an alien next to them, but they help him with his life instead. And those moments, like when you're so close to achieving something, just sprinting for that shuttle or crawling up to it and there's a, like a friendly grenade or a friendly airstrike just coming in and you're like can't I crawl any faster why is my guy so slow and that, that yeah but it, it does create these rememberable moments this is your first venture onto console that's officially gonna sort of that you've announced officially at least that I know of um, have you you've changed technology for this one, or, or what? What are you working with here? Uh, we're working with the Bitsquid engine once again. Mm -hmm. uh, we've created a really good uh, 
collaboration with the, those guys and I mean they're really passionate about making a, a good engine and it's a long time investment for us and, and that's sort of the way we, we like to keep uh, working. We like those like well we're, we're not just doing one thing we're getting this group of people that we want to work with and this goes for like all of the employees and uh, and the uh, the engine as well. We try to make those those guys that are sort of uh, ancillary developers uh, a part of the team as well and we invite them to play test and we have our uh, sound designer Tapio Lukunen in uh, in Finland of Kamo Studios and he flies over regularly to play with us and our music guy is from uh, Skellefteå where we, where we sort of founded the studio and he as well has a chance to jo join in and we try to make them sort of part of the Arrowhead family. And uh, we talked a little bit about sort of being a first party or second party with Sony. What's that experience been like? First party with Sony is it's it's a lot of fun. I mean the all of the hassles of uh, game development, all of the things that usually the, uh, like the customer or the gamer doesn't know about, like the troubles of localization, getting legal stuff for uh, such a simple thing as fonts. All of those things are just uh, being taken out of the way, and it really allows it to focus on games development. And also, we get every every week we have this cool routine of sending a weekly build to to uh, uh, to our producer and to Sony, and they play that build the first time, in, uh, like on Monday, and they give feedback on Tuesday, and we sort of look at feedback, and we can choose to implement it if we want to. But it's generally like feedback written by gamers, and it's really I really enjoy that. And nice to be working on PS4. Yes, uh, the PS4. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I approve. And the controller is just wonderful. Mm. I really like. Have you tried a PS4 controller? Absolutely. I played Hail Divers and uh, <laughs> among other things. Yeah, and the, the PS4 controller is. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of it's kind of weird with the DualShock because. You were so used to it, yet you sort of knew that it had a little bit of some, some areas where it wasn't the best. Yeah. But still, you were so used to it, but it's nice to get something that's a little bit different, that where they sort of fix those things that were niggling. Yeah, like, l like the pinching of your finger when you press the trigger, or the uh, L L2 button. That always happens to me. Not with the PS4 controller, though. <laughs> everything is a little bit too close together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Um, What's the schedule ahead? You, you you got your weekly builds going, but when's that final build gonna gonna emerge? Well, that's the thing. I mean, sometime 2014. Uh, but we're we're not stressing this. We're uh, we're letting it take it the, t the time it needs. I mean, everything is to be decided basically. I mean, we don't have this elaborate design document in any way. Instead, we play the game, and and there are. There are always gaps sort of in the design. I mean, uh, on the more difficult levels, we feel that the patrols that you encounter, they may be, they should maybe have something extra and we might add like a jumping ability to them or something like that. And that's still to be, de to be decided. Like if we have, if we feel that we have time and, uh, and there's nothing on the perpetual pain list, then we might as well do that thing. And it might be so that when I get in after a, a weekend, somebody might have put that in. It's just that kind of, the nature of that is sort of in the field is that everything is to be decided. All right, thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you.